الو بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي امري واحل عقدة من لساني يفقه قولي I'm starting my talk by the name of God and uh, I'm really happy to join this IBA meeting after all this period after uh, since 2019 and I'm excited to, to, to be with you again and also I'm super excited to be in Japan for the first time in my life. Before I start uh, the talk, um, I want to show you where I come from and also to introduce myself. My name is Hanan Saada. I'm coming from Jordan. So my Chinese, my Japanese uh, colleague, imagine how far uh, is Jordan from Japan. If I have time at the end of the presentation, I can tell you the story of how far is far. If not, then ask me in the break. And uh, if we zoom in to the region that I come from, I am Palestinian Jordanian. I live in Amman and uh, I work at the University of Jordan as an associate professor of atomic and molecular physics. In the University of Jordan, we have uh, a lovely ion beam analysis facility called JOVAC, which is University of Jordan Van de Graaff Accelerator. Unfortunately, I don't have time in these 15 minutes to tell you my long love story with Jobak, but I have to say that the work will be presented was not done, fortunately and unfortunately, was not done at Jobak. The work will be presented was performed in Florence, Italy, in INFN Labec Laboratory in collaboration with Massimo Chiari. As it's clear from the uh, title of the presentation, uh, I will talk about uh, characterization of particulate matter in urban area in Amman using two IBA techniques, PIXI and uh, PESA. And as it's clear, we use uh, PIXI, in PIXI we detect uh, the emitted uh, X-ray, while in PESA, after the ion matter interaction, we detect uh, the recoil or the forward scattered protons. Uh, now, what's the motivation and the purpose of using these two IBA techniques uh, for um, uh, air particulate matter study? The main purpose of our uh, study was mainly to do BIXI, to do BIXI characterization for simultaneously collected particulate matter in fine and coarse fractions. This was our main goal. And I think I don't need to tell you about how important is the BIXI technique for aerosol analysis, and I don't need to repeat the advantages of using BIXI for multi-elemental studies. It's enough to remind you with the quote from uh, Eva words in the opening ceremony when she said that about the first PIXI spectrum and all started by aerosol analysis. She was right. So that's enough to, to, to say about PIXI. In PIXI, what we did in our study and what is normally done as a routine work, we identify elements, we quantify elements, and then we choose the elements that are markers for pollutants. From these markers, we estimate the chemical composition to calculate the reconstructed gravimetric mass of the aerosol sample. So we sum all what we estimated and all what we, what we collected, and then we compare this with the original gravimetric mass of each aerosol sample. The closer we are to the total mass of the particulate matter, the better mass closure we get. Over the past years of the big sea studies in Jordan, we never get re uh, reconstructed uh, mass better than 60% of the particulate matter. Even I remember in the first work of Big C from the University of Jordan, the reconstructed mass was somehow like between 10 and 20%. So over all the previous studies using Big C alone, we never get better than 60%. In this study, we decided to add more information, so we wanted to take the help or the advantage of another IBA technique, which is BESA. BESA is known uh, uh, to detect the hydrogen content in the air particulate matter. You may think, as I also thought at the beginning when I learned about BESA, what will this light element add to the information about aerosol? 
But remember that this light element is concerned with the organic compounds. So it will add information. And that's what we did. And we enhanced the reconstructed mass. In the fine particulate matter, we achieved more than 90%. And in the coarse particulate matter, we achieved more than 70%. So why BESA was so useful? Again, because it gives us information about the total hydrogen content in the particulate matter. And the organic compounds is not detected, or the organic compounds are not detected by PIXI. So one of the limitations, we always remember the advantages, but let's also shine some light on the limitations. One of the limitations of PIXI, that it's incapable to detect light elements, it's incapable to detect or to give information about organic compounds. So by assuming that the detected hydrogen by the BESA technique is a portion to ammonium, and that ammonium is neutralized by sulfate, we could do this calculation to get from the total hydrogen detected by BESA, the organic hydrogen. And using this organic hydrogen, we consider also another assumption that the organic matter, particulate matter, is directly proportional to the hydrogen content. So we started with BIXI, but then we ended up doing bixi beza characterization of these simultaneously collected fine and coarse particulate matter. Now regarding the measurements done in Jordan and in Italy, sampling and sampling sites, samples were fine and coarse particulate matter collected in Teflon, which is a suitable material to do IBM. And of course, the sampling site was Jordan, and particularly it was my beloved university, the University of Jordan, and namely, it was the rooftop of my office in the physics department, where you can see in this picture two samplers, one used for the fine particulate matter collection and the other for the course. Also, we did in Jordan gravimetric and black carbon measurements. The gravimetric measurements were used before and after sampling, so we calculate the collected total uh, mass of the particulate matter, and this figure shows the obtained results for the, part the fine particulate matter concentration, PM2.5, over the sampling period. As this, this set of data was collected during 2017-2019, I did the comparison with the old limit of the BM2.5 according to the IAEA guidelines. So you can see that most of the time the BM2.5 mass concentration in Amman was on the verge of the, of the limited value of the BM2.5. But when there is a special uh, event like dust storm, it exceeds the limit so much higher. And the same also can be said about the coarse particulate matter. The other kind of measurements that we did in Amman was also the black carbon measurements. It was mainly done by smoke stain reflectometer, and part of the samples were also analyzed later by a MABI instrument, which is not shown in this figure. And this figure shows the relative comparison between the black carbon content and the total mass of the particulate matter for the fine particulates and for the coarse particulates. Regarding the IBA elemental analysis, it was totally performed in Italy in INFN Labic Laboratory using the external beam BIMBIC setup to detect all elements above sodium and using BASA in vacuum setup to detect hydrogen. This is the layout of the LABIC uh, accelerator uh, in Florence. And in this figure, you can see both the external BIXI setup and the in vacuum IBA chamber. This is a closer actual look to the uh, external BIXI setup uh, at uh, LABIC, where you can see Jordan samples are mounted on the big sampling wheel and where you can see the state-of-the-art uh, experimental setup of BIXI, where BIXI uh, or X-ray radiation is detected using simultaneously using three silicon drift detectors 
two big detectors for the high X-ray energy and one small detector for the small X-ray energy. This photo also shows the BESA setup, which is part of total IBA in vacuum chamber in Lubbock. And in the figure, you can see the direction of the beam and the particle detector used to detect protons in forward scattering. And these are the experimental conditions. Now, to show you examples of the Bixi and BESA results, this is an example of the Bixi spectrum for one of the BM10 samples. This spectrum was collected by the small detector. You can see low Z elements from sodium up to iron. And this is by the big de the silicon drift detector where you can see elements from calcium up to lead. This is an example of the BESA spectrum collected for one of the samples where the hydrogen peak is clearly noticeable. Now, from these spectra, after quantitative analysis, we got the elemental concentration for all elements from sodium to lead using Bixi and for hydrogen using PESA for both fine and coarse particulate matter. And it's clearly seen that most of the elements exist in both fractions, but with different concentrations. The top 10 elements in both fractions were mainly those related to uh, soil or to dust, but also you can see traces of the harmful elements that are related to anthropogenic sources such as lead, nickel, zinc, vanadium, and chromium. Using these elemental concentration, if they classified into markers, one can also get more information about the potential polluting sources in Amman. So we relate elements like aluminium, silicon, calcium, titanium, iron to soil, ZN and lead to traffic, vanadium and nickel to heavy oil combustion, and barium and kabar to traffic. And also, as we combined in this study BESA, we also consider hydrogen as a marker of the particulate organic matter. Using the elemental concentration of these elements, and uh, one can calculate the chemical composition in the particulate matter. And we did this using the following uh, equations. These equations are available in the literature, and they are simply based on the stoichiometric ratios of these elements in the relevant compounds. So we calculated sea salt, ammonium sulfate, soil, and organic matter. And then at the end, we checked our reconstructed mass. This figure shows a comparison of these chemical compounds, the estimated chemical compounds, versus uh, the, day, the sampling day, whether samples were collected in working days or in weekends. It's clear that most of these chemical concentration reduced dramatically during weekend because of the reduction of human activities. It's also clear that sea salt concentration is very little. It's almost negligible in Amman, and that's reasonable because Amman is not a coastal city. The same also can be seen from this figure for the coarse particulate matter. This chart shows all concentrations regardless of sampling days. For all sampling days, regardless if the sampling day was a weekend or a work day. And it's nice to see that the reconstructed mass for the fine particulate matter is about 96% of the gravimetric mass or the mass concentration of the aerosol sample. And for the coarse particulate matter, it was not bad. It was also 76%, which is satisfying, I would say. And finally, to sum up the story, I would say in summary that by combining the black carbon and the BESA data with the big C, we were able to get more information about the polluting sources in the atmosphere of Amman. And looking broadly, I think maybe that you could say that this approach has some assumptions, and it's, it might not be the ideal approach, but I would say it's promising because it's a step forward towards understanding the atmosphere of our city. And looking toward the future, I would say, if I repeat these measurements for hundreds of samples, this was done for 50 pairs of simultaneous samples. If I did it for hundreds of samples, my next goal will be to do a proper source apportionment by positive matrix factorization. Um, in terms of acknowledgement, I would like to thank the, the organizers of this 
acknowledgeable and important uh, event and uh, especially that this time it happened in Japan so I like the Japanese uh, organizers for this nice event and also I would like to, to, to thank the selection committee of the conference award for awarding me the early career award which in fact is not enough to bring me to Toyama but I would say it was good enough to write strong letters to ICTV so ICTV contributed to my travel to Toyama so I should thank ICTV as much as I could not only because of this trip but if you check my CV you would see how much ICTV offered me opportunities over all my career also my thank go to the University of Jordan my beloved university because they approved my leave request although this week is the first week of teaching classes at the University of Jordan thanks to INFN because of, they hosted the measurements. Some of the measurements were hosted under the project of Radiate, but others were also hosted under the friendship with Massimo. And thanks can also, should also go to the IAEA because the equipment that I am still using are brought through IAEA technical cooperation projects. Maybe I have one or two minutes to talk about my dream to come to Japan. Now, this is not physics, not science, but it's related to human perspective, which I believe is important. Since I was a child, it was a dream for me to go to Japan. I used to hear from my father. My father passed away like seven years ago, but I feel that he passed away only yesterday. I used to feel when I, when I was a child, I used to hear my father saying to me when he heard that, one of my goals is to visit Japan one day. He always told me that Japan is not that far. Imagine, my father always told me Japan is not that far from Jordan. Because he had a dream. He had his own dream. He was always wishing to go to, to pray just for one time in Jerusalem. And he was always thinking that a man is further from Jerusalem than Japan from Jordan. When I was a child, I thought that my father, because he studied literature and languages, his major was in literature and languages, I thought that he compared Japan to Jordan because they both have the letter J, so he considered they are so close, so he was just kidding me. But then years after, I realized that my father was right. I am here in Japan and I have my dream true finally after all these years, but my father Unfortunately, he passed away with an unfulfilled dream. So the takeaway message, if you have a dream, live for your dream or die. If you get your dream, that's an achievement. But if you didn't get it until you die, at least you have the pride that you have tried. Thank you and uh, arigato. Thank you.